Hello AP Biology students. I'm going to start a new series here where I go over the different units in the AP Biology class. Specifically, this first one is going to be about unit zero. This is going to be the pre-content or the kind of math and statistics and science that you're going to see and want to know about before you get into the actual content of the class. In this unit, I'm going to organize it into seven different sections. You can see them here and each TikTok is going to kind of review the content of each section. So without further ado, let's get into it. Section 0.1 is basically going to just be a review of science in general, specifically the scientific method and how we do science. Something that I like to reiterate to my students is that science is a verb, it's not a thing. It's not just memorizing a bunch of facts. It's a process of gaining new information about the observable universe. Now within science, we have these things called hypotheses. And in biology and science, we usually just say that a hypothesis is an educated guess. But something that's really important about a hypothesis is that it's capable of being tested and possibly falsified by evidence. This just basically means that we have to be able to physically or scientifically test this hypothesis. And this hypothesis has to be able to be falsified, which means disproved. And typically these hypotheses need to be consistent with the knowledge that we've already gained through experimentation. A great example of a hypothesis is the bell will ring at the end of the period. That might sound like a fact, but it's still a hypothesis since it's a prediction. And we can test that hypothesis. We can use observations to test it, and we can take data from this experiment. Now, in upper level AP classes, we actually will have two different types of hypotheses. And I'm going to get into more about these hypotheses later on, but basically there's the null and the alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is stated there is no significant difference between the expected and observed data. I know this may sound confusing, but the null hypothesis basically allows scientists to test the validity of an experiment. Null hypothesis testing allows scientists to really analyze if two variables are going to be influencing each other or not. The other type of hypothesis is called the alternative hypothesis, and this is typically just like your regular hypothesis. This is what the researcher is basically trying to test. During this section, I also like to go over just general terms that we use in biology, one of which is being a fact. A fact is an observation that can be repeatedly confirmed, and an example of this is water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. We can observe this and go back and observe this time and time again and see that water freezes at this temperature. Now, these observations don't always have to be taken by our, the site. You can use instruments, you can use scientific devices, you can use other senses, but basically these are just observations that can be repeated. A belief is a claim that's not supported by disprovable evidence. And there are other definitions for belief, but I like this one the best. An example of belief is aliens exist. And this is a belief that I have. We don't have any scientifically disprovable evidence that supports that aliens exist. And this is a belief that I have, but it's still a belief. It's not a fact because we can't go back and repeatedly confirm that aliens exist. Now, this belief may change as we gain new evidence, but until that time, it's still a belief. Pseudoscience is a collection of beliefs or practices mistakenly regarded as being based on, a, on the scientific method. Astrology is the thought that the positions of the planets affect human behavior, basically. And there is no scientific disprovable evidence that supports this. There's actually a lot of evidence out there that disproves this. Astrology seems like it is scientific because they take observations, but they're not disprovable observations. Next, we have something called a theory. A theory is an explanation of how or why certain phenomena occur in the natural world. Theories are based on extensive observation, experimentation, and something called the peer review process. Something that's really important for people to understand is that theories can and often do change. And that goes against what people kind of perceive science as. I think the perception of science from society is that science is unchanging, and that's not the case. Theories often do change. They become more accurate. They even change how they understand or explain certain concepts. But it doesn't mean that science is wrong. A lot of times our scientific method leads us to become more accurate with our understanding of certain processes. Something else that I think is really important for people to understand about theories is that they are falsifiable, which means they can be disproven. I'm going to go into a deeper understanding of what a theory is using different analogies in a little bit. A scientific law, on the other hand, describes what's happening. And these are usually mathematical in nature and under certain circumstances. For example, F equals MA, force equals mass times acceleration. 
That is a law because it's describing what happens. It's not describing how or why that's happening. It's just, just describing what is happening. It's again important to understand that a scientific law and a scientific theory are two separate things, and one is not better than the other. They just explain science in a different way. Here's a simple way that a student actually showed me that I absolutely love about remembering the difference between a theory and a law. Remember that the word theory has an H and a Y in it, and the word law has the letter W. That's because theories explain how and why things happen, while laws describe what happens. If you don't take anything from this one section, I would take this. Theories do not become laws with more evidence. I think there's a, again, misunderstanding from society that we start out with hypotheses, we move to theories, and then we become a law. When it's not the case, theories and laws are two separate things. A theory will never become a law with more evidence because they describe two different sets of ideas. For example, evolution is a theory because there is a huge amount of indisputable evidence for its occurrence. Evolution has been tested time and time again, and all of the scientific evidence supports that evolution occurs. However, evolution will never become a law because they're just describing two different things. Something else that I like to point out at this point is that science doesn't prove anything. In my classes, I actually kind of joke around and say that the prove or the P word is a swear word in my class. Because again, science never proves anything. I love this quote from Albert Einstein, no amount of experimentation can ever prove me right, a single experiment can prove me wrong. Science tends to disprove ideas in order to come to a conclusion that is supported by the evidence. But again, you can never prove anything in science because what amount of evidence does prove something in science? Proofs in math or proving things in court are very different than how science goes about discovering things. All right, so here's an analogy for what a scientific theory is. Imagine there is a shape behind this white blank space and you can feel around the shape, but you can't actually see what the shape is with your own eyes. So what you start doing is you start feeling around these different locations and start taking data points. So you get some data and you start hypothesizing and making conclusions based on this evidence. So obviously it can be a triangle, it can be a diamond, it can be a circle, it can be a square, but it can't be a line. The evidence does not support that it's one straight line. So like in science, we experiment more and find more data. We feel around the different points here and we find these points and we conclude from the evidence that the evidence supports that this is no longer a square or a triangle. It could be a circle, it could be an octagon, it could be, there could be a lot of lines in between here that makes it look like a sun. But we know that this shape is no longer a square. The evidence does not support that the shape is a square because it just won't make sense. So again, we experiment more and find more evidence. We disprove that it's an octagon. Now it's starting to look like a circle, but we can't for sure say it's a circle. This is what I mean by saying we can't prove this is a circle. We can't look behind the curtain here and see that it's a circle. However, all of the evidence does support that it's a circle and the evidence disproves that it's a square. So again, we find more evidence, and again, it looks like a circle, or a badly drawn circle, but a circle, but we can't for sure say that we proved it's a circle. All of the evidence supports that it's a circle, but we can also say that it disproves that it's a square. By taking account of all the evidence and data and observations that we've taken about the shape, we can confidently say that it's a circle, but we can't prove it's a circle. We can say that all the evidence supports it's a circle, but again, this is what a scientific theory is. You can never prove anything to be true in science, but you can say that all of the evidence supports that it is a circle.